Uh, hi, everyone, uh, and sorry for, for, for the delay. My name is Hossein Azarbonyat. I am a, a machine learning scientist in Elsevier, and today I will be talking about uh, one of our initiatives between Elsevier and uh, a few uh, medical centers in the Netherlands on annotating and indexing scientific article with rare diseases. This is a joint work between myself, Zuber, Max, and George from Elsevier, and Rick from uh, Erasmus Medical Center. Uh, let me start with uh, uh, explaining why we are doing this and uh, uh, briefly discuss uh, the uh, scope of the problem we are trying to tackle. Uh, only in Europe, about 30 million people are suffering from a rare or orphan disease, and the disease is considered uh, to be rare uh, if it occurs in less than one per 2,000 people. Uh, obviously, rare disease patients are entitled to the best possible care, but uh, finding the best possible care uh, needs answering some questions. For example, you need to know what are the excellent centers that could best treat uh, uh, patients for certain rare diseases, or what are the key, key research initiatives across uh, ar around different rare diseases and who are doing this kind of uh, initiatives. One way to answer such questions is uh, doing some uh, deep bibliometrical or scientometrical analysis to see uh, for example, different uh, research outputs in terms of publications that are around different uh, rare diseases uh, to see who is the most active, who, what institute or research center is the most active uh, around the particular rare disease. And uh, that's our motivation to do this research. So we, our goal is to map research outputs. Uh, basically, we, we take articles from Scopus and uh, we map them to uh, concepts or diseases in a, a, a taxonomy of uh, rare diseases uh, orphanet and by doing so we track research on different rare diseases so basically this is uh, in terms of uh, machine learning uh, it can be seen as a classification task so we have articles and we have a taxonomy and we want to find out what article is relevant to what disease and uh, our goal is to basically uh, perform this uh, uh, analysis and provide different kind of uh, insights around uh, what uh, 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 what research centers are specialized around what diseases. Uh, apart from the uh, application I just explained, uh, medical centers can also use this output, for example, to showcase their research output to be recognized as an expert center or to get funding in the research areas they are expert at or recruit, retrain, or promote talented researchers and faculty members. Uh, but indexing uh, articles with rare diseases is a challenging task here. I, I will uh, uh, list a few challenges that we faced uh, while doing this particular research. Um, the, most of these challenges, for us at least, are open challenges, but we try to address some of them. Uh, the first challenge is that there is no labeled articles with rare diseases concept to train and uh, evaluate supervised mo models. So. Uh, uh basically uh, to uh, building uh, uh, a large enough corpus is also very uh, costly because uh, expertise around rare disease is also rare so uh, annotating articles with uh, rare disease concept is a very costly uh, task and uh, the second challenge is some rare diseases are only rare in a specific part of population for example uh, inflama inflammatory bowel disease is rare in children but uh, not so rare in adults so any model uh, to so bas basically to uh, understand if a mention of such is, is rare or not in a con uh, uh, in an article, uh, you need to have a deep understanding of, of the concept that disease is being mentioned. And uh, some rare diseases are very, uh, uh, some rare diseases are very similar conceptually, and their differences are very dif difficult to recognize. For example, here you see two uh, different rare diseases. They they only uh, have one. Uh, character, one different character. So any uh, kind of uh, lexical matching model would probably uh, uh, not able to uh, distinguish between these two diseases. And sometimes even the genes causing diseases are very similar. And in that case, uh, 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 you need to have uh, uh, semantic matching models to understand, to, to use uh, uh, the context around diseases to uh, annotate them correctly. And uh, the taxonomy we use, the orphanet, as, as any other taxonomy, are, is incomplete. So there are uh, frequently updates or, uh, on this taxonomy. So any model, any model or system that you build uh, to annotate articles with this taxonomy need to be, up, uh, need to be updated uh, frequently as well. 
And uh, some classical uh, challenges associated with any taxonomy, such as polysemy and synonymy, is also associated with uh, 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 orphanet. Uh, and uh, uh, you need to find ways to address these kind of challenges as well. As I mentioned, most of these challenges, especially the second and the third challenge, are very difficult to address. But we have tried in this research to address some of these challenges with a simple pipeline. And uh, to build uh, our system, uh, we, we use Scopus database, which is uh, one of the largest databases uh, uh, containing uh, scientific publication. We only focus on the publication published in the past 10 years, which contains about 36 million records with a rich set of uh, metadata. And as the rare disease taxonomy, we use uh, Orphanet, which is a structure, structured vocabulary for rare diseases, capturing the relationship between diseases, genes, and other relevant features. This is created uh, in 1997 in, Fran in, in France, and it contains uh, uh, more than 9,000 concepts organized in a hierarchy. And here you see uh, the, uh, uh, our annotation approach, which is a very simple approach. As I mentioned, we, as, as a database uh, of articles, we use Scopus. And we apply different kind of filterings on top of Scopus. For example, we filter the database by year. As I mentioned, we only focus on the past 10 years. Or if we want to narrow down the uh, uh, the analysis to different organizations or, or, or countries, we also apply different kind of filters. From Scopus database, we only uh, pick title, abstract, and keywords of articles. We have tried to use uh, uh, full text of articles, but it turned out uh, uh, to be very noisy so basically uh, it lead to a lot of false positives uh, and we in the end we decided to only focus on the three on these three fields and as a future work we are trying to find ways to deal with the noise uh, associated with the full text when it's used to uh, build the system so we use title abstract and keywords we concatenate them and we build our documents from orphanet taxonomy we use names of the diseases synonyms and genes associated with the disease and we uh, basically feed them uh, to our annotation engine which does the matching between the documents and uh, and the diseases um as the annotation engine, we use uh, the Cybyte termite annotation tool. Cybyte is a basically a, a startup specialized in uh, uh, building tools uh, for biopharma and uh, biomedical uh, uh, named entity recognition. And termite is one of the uh, their most effective tools for NER, especially in the domain of uh, biomedical and biopharma. And termite is a, basically a, a simple. Uh, a named entity recognition tool that rapidly scans and semantically annotates raw text with entities from over 50 biopharma and biomedical topics. And here you see an example annotation done uh, by Termite. <clears throat> as you can see, it, it uh, tries to find the names of diseases uh, as well as the their synonyms in the text. Uh, a few words about this uh, Termite annotation tool. <clears throat> well, it turned out that this Termite uh, the taxonomy that is that is behind termite only co uh, well covers most of the uh, orphanet taxonomy, uh, which is like uh, the coverage is about uh, ninety eight percent. The other two percent is not involved uh, because uh, because of the uh, frequent updates applied on top of this taxonomy. To cover the other two percent, we use a simple string matching met method, which basically tries to find the exact matches of. Uh, names and synonyms of uh, diseases in the uh, documents. Uh, Termite, what it does is basically it performs a synonym search and uh, in uh, combination with fuzzy matching. So basically it tries to uh, kind of match the names and synonyms of diseases in the uh, documents using a fuzzy matching approach. And it tries to disambiguate this detected entities if there is any uh, ambiguity. For example, if an entity, a, a detected entity uh, if a detected candidate uh, is matched to multiple entities, it tries to uh, disambiguate it by looking into the other entities detected in the document or by looking at the genes, uh, disease relations uh, uh, that are being mentioned in the document. Um, so basically, that, that that's in simple words, uh, they are annotation pipeline uh, for annotating uh, documents with rare diseases concepts. 
uh, to evaluate this, the effectiveness of this system. As I said, the evaluation is difficult and challenging because there is no uh, annotated data set and domain expertise and is required for annotation, but it's uh, quite costly to get. Uh, and uh, another alternative is uh, to look into the uh, other well-known uh, taxonomies and the tools and data sets around them. For example, we looked into the uh, mesh and uh, annotated data sets for mesh and also the systems uh, that are developed for mesh to see if we can use the data or the systems uh, to also annotate rare diseases in, in, in uh, articles. But it turned out that most of these taxonomies have a low coverage for uh, Orphanet. So in the end, uh, we decided to use the termite uh, and we decided to use uh, our annotation engine. Uh, but uh, still, we, we needed to uh, see how effective our approach is compared to, for example, a simple baseline, which is a uh, simple uh, string matching method. To do so, we designed a very small scale and uh, very focused uh, evaluation experiment where we uh, used our annotation engine to uh, annotate uh, articles published by uh, authors in the Netherlands. And uh, then uh, we focused on the four big uh, medical centers in the Netherlands and we uh, sent their articles al uh, along with the uh, 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 concepts and uh, as uh, concepts associated to them by the uh, by our engine and also by a simple string matching method and then we ask them to judge which system uh, provides a better uh, annotation and uh, here you see that the results uh, for three uh, first uh, medical centers it turned out that the termite uh, our annotation engine performs a, uh, better than a simple string matching method but for Amsterdam medical center especially the string match matching performed better and the reason is that uh, we try to uh, optimize our tool to have a high recall, but for Amsterdam Medical Center, it turned out that they uh, care more about precision. And uh, in the end, we decided to make the system adjustable so that users can opt for precision or recall. And also an, inter an interesting observation is that uh, for many articles, the codes assigned by uh, uh, termite and string matching are actually the same. So there, here you see a, a large number of ties. And the reason is that uh, the rare diseases or ORFA concepts tend to be very unique and specific, which is uh, uh, detectable by simple string matching as well. And uh, here you see the statistics of uh, uh, Sc Scopus publication on rare diseases detected uh, by our uh, engine here you see the unique and non-unique number of matches for netherlands eu and uh, uh, the world basically uh, non-unique means that uh, some articles uh, might have uh, mul might, might be relevant to multiple rare diseases and the unique means that uh, the unique basically reflects the unique number of uh, publications on top of uh, rare diseases and uh, overall, there were about 2.5 million articles in the past 10 years uh, around uh, different rare diseases. And uh, we are in the process of building uh, a product based on, based on these results. Uh, so we, we basically want to build a standalone product uh, that can serve uh, that, uh, and be publicly available uh, to be used by uh, patients as well as medical centers to track the different research outputs uh, around different diseases. Uh, but uh, as I said, we are in the process of building it, but as an intermediate step, uh, we try to uh, import this data into uh, Cyval, which is a product of Elsevier to basically perform bibliometrical analysis. And here I just want to uh, show you how a combination of uh, uh, our tool with the rich uh, metadata available in Scopus can provide useful insights about uh, around different uh, diseases. Here you see a dashboard that we built for a particular mus muscular dystrophy. Uh, you can see different kind of uh, publication, total number of publications over the past uh, 10 years, different number of authors uh, that worked on this uh, particular diseases. And uh, if we go further, we can also reveal different kind of collaborations on, on this particular disease. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, uh, national collaborations. 
and uh, also you can track uh, the, uh, the number of publications over the years as well as you can see uh, the authors who are most active in this particular uh, 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 research area and also different institutions uh, published uh, basically you can see the ranking of institutions uh, uh, based on their publications on this particular rare disease. Uh, we believe this can provide a lot of useful insights uh, to patients as well as uh, medical center. And uh, uh, the dashboard I just showed. And uh, well, basically to conclude, uh, I, I we just uh, started working with, on this topic and uh, we have faced a lot of challenges uh, while uh, building this system. And I just uh, briefly explained some of the challenges we faced. And uh, uh, we basically don't have good solutions for most of them, but we have a solution that works, which is uh, using termite in combination of, uh, with uh, fuzzy matching and string search with uh, entity dis disintegration techniques. And uh, uh, as, I, uh, as I mentioned, we still uh, need to find ways to deal with noisy annotation when using full text articles. We still have a lot of noise uh, and false positive when using uh, uh, full text, but we believe a lot of uh, information can be extracted from full text, uh, but we need to find a way to deal with the noise. And uh, that's it. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions uh, in my tab. So are there any questions uh, that I can answer? Okay, that took a long time to unmute. You can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So a quick question from me. You mentioned that you still need to find a solution to the problem with full text. Yeah. yeah. But uh, what is the problem actually? Do you know why you get performance problems in full text? Uh, yeah, so most, of, most of this comes uh, when using, for, for example, people mention uh, uh, a lot of a lot of mentions of rare diseases come in the related work section, for example, of the articles where they explain uh, the related work in the related diseases, but actually it's not about the particular rare disease in the uh, in this study. So we have seen a lot of this uh, noise coming from the related work sections. And uh, yeah, as I said, we are trying to deal with it and we are trying to build a, a supervised machine learning system to actually tackle this problem.